If you watch recipe videos on YouTube, you must have heard the term browning the food a million times by chefs around the world. Whether the chef is trained in modern western cuisine searing a steak or it's your grandma caramelizing onions, they all insist on browning your food to extract maximum flavor out of the ingredients. Today we will embark upon an aromatic journey where we will try to explain what food browning is and what are the perfect conditions to brown your food. I am the food scientist and I'm here to answer all the lingering questions you had about food and the science involved in cooking. So what is food browning? As the name suggests, food turns brown due to a chemical reaction within the food. Food browning can be divided into two main categories, enzymatic browning and non-enzymatic browning. Let's take a look at enzymatic browning first. Enzymatic browning do not require extreme heat but rather requires oxygen. When fresh fruits and vegetables go stale and brown, it happens because of enzymatic browning. Delicate seafood is especially susceptible to enzymatic browning. Shrimps grow brown and flimsy because of it. That's why chefs urge you to buy the freshest seafood you can find. Not only do they taste better, but when fresh, they have a higher nutritional value to their sale counterpart. So how does enzymatic browning work? There are enzymes in fresh produce like fruits, vegetables, meat and seafood which creates melanin and other compounds when they oxidize. Melanin is a pigment which gives your skin and hair color. Dark skinned people have more melanin in their skin than light skinned people. Your hair turns white due to the lack of melanin. Food scientists have developed a genetically modified apple which does not brown. They are called arctic apples. I am not a big fan of GMO products. Good news is you don't have to buy GMO apples to avoid enzymatic browning. Food technologists do apply a thin layer of edible wax on apples and similar foods to create an oxygen barrier. If oxygen can't get through the food, it won't brown. You can also blanch the vegetables to denature the enzymes and stop the food from browning. You can also sprinkle some lemon juice and other forms of acid to prevent the cut up fruits from going brown. Lowering the temperature of your produce can also reduce the rate of enzymatic browning. Enzymatic browning is not all evil and can also be used to your benefit. For example, it develops taste and color in coffee, cocoa beans and tea. It also develops taste in dry fruits like raisins and figs. An average home cook usually knows most of the stuff I talked about up till yet. Now let's move on to the more interesting part of food browning the non-enzymatic browning. As the name suggests, non-enzymatic browning do not occur because of the enzymes in food. There are two subcategories of non-enzymatic browning, caramelization and the Maillard reaction. We'll talk about the Maillard reaction first. Suppose you marinate a whole chicken in a spice blend, then split it in two halves. You steam one half whereas grill the other will both taste the same. Remember we use the exact same ingredients but the grilled chicken will have a more fuller taste than the steamed chicken. Why the difference? Grilled chicken gets brown when cooked in hot and dry environment whereas the steamed chicken will not brown as it's cooked in hot and moist environment. When food is cooked in hot and dry environment a chemical reaction occurs between the amino acids and the sugars which releases hundreds of new flavor compounds. This reaction is called the Maillard reaction. That's why brown foods like seared steak, barbecue meat, french fries, bread, cookies, roasted marshmallows taste so good. They all go through this reaction. A steak can be boiled to a medium rare, but it will never taste as good as a well seared medium rare steak. It's because of the hundreds of flavor compounds created by the Maillard reaction. Please note that the term is food browning. If you overdo it, the food chars and blackens. It destroys the flavor and creates a harmful compound called acrylamide. It's a carcinogen, and your body resists to the consumption of acrylamide. That's why burnt toast don't taste so good. So next time you grill, keep an eye on the food. Brown is good, black is sad. There are ways to create a more suitable environment for your food to go through the Maillard reaction. Maillard reaction accelerates in alkaline environments. So a pinch of baking soda will help your food to brown faster and better. 
Maillard reaction is a chemical reaction between the amino acids and the proteins. So if you are browning a protein rich food like meat, add a pinch of sugar to accelerate the browning. You can also add protein to accelerate the browning. That's why chefs egg wash the bread and puff pastries to brown their bakes good. The most favorable temperature for the Maillard reaction is 110 degrees Celsius to 170 degrees Celsius. That's like medium high heat on your domestic stove. Maillard reaction is a very powerful marketing tool. Starbucks roasts their coffee beans on site. The smell of freshly roasted beans entice you to get your morning fix at exuberant prices. Local barbecue joints do the same. You will be able to smell a good barbecue joint way before you will be able to see it. That's the power of the Maillard reaction. Spider-Man's uncle once said, With great power comes great responsibility. Now that you have the power to create exceptional dishes, it is your responsibility to share this knowledge with your loved ones. So don't forget to share this video. I have a few recipe videos on my YouTube channel. It is by the name of Food Scientist. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more such videos. Food Scientist, signing off.